So can you just tell me a little bit about what happened and when it happened? Okay, it happened um Friday Friday night around like ten thirty. Uh, we we were at we were at um, the mall earlier at, from from a protest in from a protest in Shaw Park, and we're at the mall. So we did that protest inside the mall. It was a good protest. Everybody was chanting. We we shut shit down there, and then um. We made our way over to Ferguson later in the later in the night, around ten thirty, ten forty five, mm-hmm. and we decided to the, the protest was going on when we got there, so we joined in and started chanting. So the protest eventually moved into the street because we didn't see any impeding traffic. We moved into the street because this is these are our streets, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we moved into the street, was chanting, and. Morgan, Morgan, uh, gave me gave me her phone to record record what was going on and capture what 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 was going on. At that moment, the riot police started um, assembling assembling in front of us and saying that if we didn't move out the street, then we were subject to arrest and whatnot. So as as that was going on, um, and like. I'd say like 20 seconds after that, after they assembled, they they started charging, they started throwing people to the ground, and I was one of those people. We shut shit down. 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 We shut shit down.
So between the point of them saying get out of the road to the point of them tackling, rushing, and arresting people, there's about a 20 second delay? Um, yeah, about, it happened very quickly, you know, when I had, when she handed me the camera, between when she handed me the camera and, and I started recording, that's what pretty much happened. Mm -hmm. I was doing regular chants at the same time as I was recording. Mm -hmm. what, what I believe happened was I had been holding my video camera for about um, three minutes while I videotaped the entire atmosphere all around. Mm -hmm. I got uh, images of the, the demonstrators in the middle of the street. I showed uh, the National Guard's formation, and then I showed in the video I was able to capture when the riot police emerged from behind the National Guards coming from the parking lot adjacent or actually right next to the police station the riot uh, police, you know, emerged from that parking lot and they came in front of the National Guard. And mm. that's when they started telling us, your directive is to back up out of the street. Anyone who does not back up is subject to arrest. Mm -hmm. But the, the point I think is, I had been videotaping everything and they knew that I was, I was directly in front of all the demonstrators. I was holding the camera and, and taking video so that mm -hmm. I could show both sides, mm -hmm. you know, so I had to be in front of everyone. But as soon as I handed my camera off to Demetrio, as like literally, as soon as that happened, they rushed. And I feel like, you know, it could have just been a coincidence, but I feel like they, you know, they saw that it was an opportunity to get that camera out of his hands, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, he wasn't chanting. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing anything that was of any threat. I just want to add that. Here he did. Here he is. What was the, what was the protest out, out that night about? Was that in front of the police department in Ferguson? Yes, it was. What transpired after they, uh, you know, handcuffed you and, and took you away? What happened? They, um, they brought me to, to their little area for, um, um, transfer to where, where the paddy wagon is assembled and stuff like that for all the people that got arrested. So they were just, they brought us all back there. There were different people that were injured in the back, back there too as well. And there was, there was a, there was a, another like student from New York City that was pepper sprayed at. I asked, um, I asked one of the, one of the marshals to give him some eye wash and they were saying they don't have any eye wash. Mm. So, you know, it was it was just it was not it was not good. And th and then you, how long were you held? We were held. I was held for twenty four hours, and I I got out um Sunday su no Saturday Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Like late night. Yeah, about ten forty five. Okay, and um and what were you charged with? Uh, I was charged with this. Disturbing the peace, class A misdemeanor. But the charges were dropped. So what happened there? How did they get dropped? The, the, the police department just decided, or the prosecutor just decided not to charge you? Well, I, I, I see it this way since, um, since we're from out of state that they just want us to, they try to show, treat, show, show a lesson and hold me 24 hours and think that I was going to just go back home and, and, you know, just run away with my between my legs or something like that so I think it was a way to just show you know to go away just go home, just go home now it's sort of a, a deterrent tactic on their part to get you to leave yeah yeah but you you haven't left <laughs> no we're still here and why are you guys down there because 
We intend to go back to the per Ferguson Police Department and continue to protest and stand up for what we believe in and this injustice and needs to, needs to be addressed. So that's why we're still here. Have you have you gone to the any of the memorials for like Mike Brown or Von Derrett or um, Kajimi? Have no, you gone? No, I, no, I haven't yet. But um, I, I I intend to stop by and visit those memorials. What is the uh, what's the atmosphere like there right now? Right now, yeah, we are currently not in Ferguson, so I would say it's still pretty electric. When when we were when it, when we were there, it was it was very electric. I don't see it calming down anytime soon so mm -hmm. but we haven't been back there since the incident do you have any thoughts about the system of justice in this country this this um this this country uh yes i have a, i have a few thoughts about this and this, this country because it's just a it's pretty much just an injustice country it's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So I have a, um, this country needs to be addressed. It, it, it's pretty much overhaul, like, you know, and it's, it's like, like total liberation. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. And everything needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not just one issue. It's not, it's not just, it's not just mm -hmm. Mike Brown and Derrick Wilson. It's everywhere. So, yeah. It's just, it needs to be, it just needs to be completely reformed. Uh, D'Amico, D'Amico is, is relatively new to this whole concept of, like, public protest. Like, he's always had in his heart, as a Rastafarian, you know, he believes in one love and one people and all that. But, you know, the idea of confronting systemic oppression, like, mm -hmm. and, and to, like total liberation being the goal is, is a relatively new concept. So, like... I don't think that I'm putting words in your mouth to say that what we're actually after after is not reform of the system, but destruction of the system that every day destroys our lives. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so I just I think you're that's yeah. correct. Right? I'm gonna pass the phone back because I just want to be specific. <laughs> I I was just wondering what was going through your head when you saw Domingo getting arrested. Well, on the way out here uh, from Buffalo, New York to um, St. Louis, like, you know, we talked for that 12-hour trip about, you know, the fact that we might never come home, mm -hmm. and arrest is kind of like a given. I mean, that's the least of our concerns at this point, mm -hmm. and so when I saw that happen, of course, that's not something I want to see, but I knew that the arrest being the least of our concerns you know, I wasn't like, oh, my God, what's happening? I'm not, I didn't know this would happen. Like, I mean, people that have been out here are very accustomed to having M1s and things pointed in their faces, you know, mm -hmm. being brutalized by the police with flashbangs and all kinds of different sound devices that, 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 that you know, like, disorient you, harm you physically. So, mm -hmm. so, but as coming from the outside in, you know, voluntarily putting ourselves in this position, we kind of knew what to expect, mm -hmm. but yeah, seeing it kind of like drove it home. Right. I think that we were all blessed to have not, you know, been uh, tear gas that night, rubber bullets, or worse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't like to see him locked up, but I think we were, we were more than prepared for that possibility. I felt, I felt like me being arrested was like a showing everyone that all my friends that back home that aren't really going out there and being involved in this, that they can have a voice to and be involved and stand up for what they believe in mm -hmm. and, you know, and start, start, you know, showing that they, 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 they see what's going on and just, they know it's not right. So just want them to be activated. And I feel like me being arrested activated is a few, few individuals that I know back home. Do you, um, how, how long are you guys going to stay out there? Um, originally when we came out here, we did not have any idea. Um, but because, you know, there are already organizers here who have, you know, groups that they work with, you know, we're just coming out here as individuals mm -hmm. and, and 
and there's a limited amount that we can do other than putting ourselves on the front lines to be arrested or shot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the kind of work that we want to be doing, and I think I speak for both of us, is more of like organizing, mm-hmm. like hands-on organizing, um, as opposed to just being another body out there on the front lines, which is always important. Mm-hmm. I'm not downplaying that. But I think what one of the things we're thinking about doing right now is to head back to Western New York with experiences that we've gotten out here, you know, disseminate that information, uh, help to energize and activate more people. Mm-hmm. But also with Fred Hampton's Day of uh, Martyrdom soon approaching on December 4th, it being December 1st today, you know, I think that for me specifically, personally, I think my place might be in Buffalo, New York, trying to activate a city that up until this point, you know, and including today, has not done much of anything, you know, other than a little bit of side holding. And I think, you know, if we can if we can come back with the passion and ideology that this is not about Ferguson, Missouri. This is not about Darren Wilson. This is not about Mike Brown. And talking about Fred Hampton and, and the ideas that he held in his heart when he was assassinated, you know, was were thoughts of total liberation. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't fighting for, you know, one or two people that he saw brutalized by police. He was he, he was fighting for all people. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the kind of that's the kind of passion that we're coming back to Western New York with. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I just feel like when they put a bullet in Fred Hampton's head, their intention was to to quell and to repress the ideas of revolution, mm-hmm. and we need to resurrect his name on, on December 4th. I think we need to do a call to action where we make this issue that's being portrayed by the media as an exclusive situation in Ferguson and we let them know no 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 Mm. that's so wrong you know this is our opportunity to change the narrative and let people know this is this is so much bigger this is about total liberation this is about the people's struggle this is about workers rights and all the rest of it Mm -hmm. you know what um is there any like uh news or information going on or around going on in St. Louis about that guy that was killed in the car the night after the grand jury verdict? Have you heard about that? No, no. and, and that's, that's quite appalling, um, not surprising, but, yo, that's one of the things that I was just like, for real, I'm not hearing any talk about it inside of activist groups. I'm not hearing any talk of it on the, on the TV, and I think that that is one of the things that you can point to and say, this is where our movement is failing. The fact that, um, you know, we're all concerned about the National Guard, you mm-hmm. know, fair enough. We're all concerned about the militarization of police. Mm-hmm. But what people are not talking about mm-hmm. is the force that is being brought to the table now through the powers of the KKK, mm-hmm. the neo Nazis. The people who have been waiting, trained all of their lives for this day, and all they're waiting for is a go-ahead to come and take some motherfuckers out. Yeah. And that's the thing that I think it would really do this movement justice if we start paying attention to when little black boys' uh, bodies get found shot up and then burned. You might as well have had a fucking flaming cross next to that vehicle where his body was found torched. Mm -hmm. Because that's not some police shit. And if it is some police shit, it's because the KKK is is now dressing in a police uniform Mm -hmm. instead of a white robe. You know, that's that's my personal feeling. So, so it it is it is very much aware on this uh, among people in St. Louis. It sounds like people know about this. Yeah, people know. Yeah, people know about it. But I, I the feeling I get is that it's considered just another. You know, another uh, act of, of violence against, you know, a I, young black man by maybe they think it was the police. Maybe I they see, think I it see. was, you know, a random act um, of violence. But I haven't heard anybody saying, yo, <laughs> like, what what else could this be? Right, what else right. could this be? Because, because when we went to the memorial for Mike Brown and that 
uh, apparently that had uh, teddy bears and flowers all up and down that block. But when we went, there was just a little flag. I'm sorry, there was just a little light pole surrounded by teddy bears and some, you know, some memorial things in the middle of the street. And I said, oh, I thought this thing was bigger. And somebody said, yeah. Somebody came in and set it all on fire. Okay, right. people need to, you know, to acknowledge the fact that, in all honesty, the military might be uh, the least of our problems when when certain people want to start really, you know. I mean, that's my personal opinion. I think that the military is definitely an enemy, obviously an enemy, but um, they have to play under the rules. Like, they don't have to play, but they want to make it look like they're at least, like, operating under some semblance of quote-unquote justice and mm -hmm. serving the people. These other people that I'm talking about that I feel are out here right now, mm. they don't play by those rules. And when I'm driving around, walking around St. Louis, downtown, I'm seeing a whole lot of hillbillies out here. No offense, my family comes from West Virginia, so I feel that, and I, and I you know, so right. it's not something I'm unfamiliar with, but I will tell you that there are a whole lot of, like, big body trucks out here with, like, huge tires r revving their engines at stoplights, peeling out of gas stations. These motherfuckers are ready for war, and we need to be ready ourselves. That's all I'm saying. Any, uh, any last comments or questions you'd like me to ask you that I haven't already? Um, no, I don't think so. I just, again, I just want to reiterate the fact that this is not a Ferguson, Missouri issue, mm -hmm. and it's time for people to wake up, you know, um... I understand the system of oppression is such that it purposely makes people feel apathetic. Mm -hmm. It purposely creates uh, a system where people are more concerned about paying bills and putting food on their plates and standing up for liberation. Mm -hmm. But but we all have to step our game up and do a little more than what we've been doing. Or yeah, and this is the time is now, you know. Yeah, I have just one one comment yep. to make that. The reason I'm the reason that I'm doing this, the reason is for total liberation, so that every all the all the youngsters, all the the my sisters, include my sisters, my family, know that they could be they could live their lives safe and they could live their lives in harmony and e equal equal eyes on on the you know everybody looks up to them as equals. In this world, and I want them to grow up in a, in a world that where they look, they're visioned as equals, and they don't have to walk out the house and worry about people shooting them down in the streets or having them look over their shoulder every second of the day. Well, thank you both for your uh, time today, um, and uh, safe travels.